Hey there guys, this is Mr. Marek. In this video we're going to start learning a little bit about physics. And the first thing we need to understand about physics is how objects move. We kind of need to be able to describe a little bit about how things move and then we can start explaining why things move. So the first thing we might do is think about what does it mean to move. Real simply, something moves if it has changed its position. You can use other words like location or spot or place in terms of position, but position is the fancy physics word that we're going to use. So if an object goes from one position to another, we say that it has moved. So if something is in the process of having its position change over time, then we say that it is in motion. So that means that something has, is currently changing positions as a function of time. It's a process. So when we talk about positions, positions are things that are defined by an observer. Typically the observer is going to be you, relative to some coordinate system that you, as the observer, would choose. Um, the symbol that we use for position is the letter X, lower letter X, and the easiest way for us to measure positions are in meters. Like we would say a certain number of meters from some position that we define to be zero. We refer to this system as a frame of reference. We're going to hear that term a couple of times throughout the year. So for example, a number line could be considered a coordinate system. And this is essentially what we did when we did the bowling ball lab. We set up a number line in the hallway. I, as an observer, chose where zero was going to be. I just put a piece of tape randomly on the floor and said, this is where I'm going to make measurements from. And then I, as the observer, chose which direction was going to be the positive direction. So I chose moving away from my classroom door to be the positive direction. And so the numbers got bigger going in that direction. These are choices that the observer gets to make. So I could have put those pieces of tape anywhere, and the motion would still be the same. So the first fancy physics term we need to learn is the term velocity. Velocity refers to the rate of change in position with respect to time. Basically, it's a measure of how quickly the position of an object is changing. Now that key thing in there about changing is sometimes kind of tricky. That means that it's in the process of happening. And so velocity is a rate of change with respect to time. It's a, a measurement of how quickly something is changing. We can symbolize velocity with the symbol V, which we write as a lowercase v. If you're like me and you have bad handwriting, be careful with that. And we can write a simple equation to express the idea of rate of change of position with rate of with respect to time, as it's just change in x over change in t, which would have the units of meters per second. So if you're not familiar with that symbol delta, the triangle symbol, that simply represents change in. So this we literally read as change in position over change in time. Kind of like that. Now we have a fancy name for the change in displacement, or a change of position, when we give that the fancy name displacement. The symbol for displacement would just be the delta x. So in our bowling ball laugh, we lab, we ended up creating a graph that looks something like this, because a graph is a very useful way to visualize motion. Typically we'll graph position on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. Now don't let the fact that the symbol for position is x confuse you. It's just the thing we're going to graph on the vertical axis and it just happens to have the symbol x. Later on we're going to have vertical positions and we'll give them the symbol y. We may even have depth positions which we would give the symbol z. So don't get confused with x being over here. x is just the symbol for position. So when we graphed our data, we ended up getting something kind of like that, where the rate of change would be equal to the slope, which we now call the velocity, and the starting position, 
starting point can be found from the y-intercept. The fancy physics term that we would use would be the initial position. And we give that the symbol x with the subscript 0, which sometimes we read as x naught, not as in like 0. Um, and again, that stands for the initial position or the starting point. Again, that's something that's kind of chosen by the observer. So in general, we can write an equation from these graphs that will describe the motion of an object. Something like x, because that's on our y-axis, equals the velocity, which is the slope, times t, which is on the x-axis, plus the initial position. So that's just an equation in y equals mx plus b form, just rewritten using the variables and definitions that we use in physics. So if I draw a couple other examples, that being like the first one that I drew, if we have something whose motion graph looks something like that, then that would represent something that has a greater velocity. It's got a greater velocity because it has a steeper slope. If the graph looked more like that, that would represent something that has a negative velocity. All that a negative velocity means is that it's moving in the opposite direction. And so if moving away from the classroom door was moving in the positive direction, then that third graph would represent something that's moving towards the classroom door. And again, these are all things that are defined by the observer. The next thing we need to understand is what happens when something is changing its velocity. This situation is referred to as, a, as accelerated motion. So something is accelerating if its velocity is changing over time. So if you think back to our definition of velocity, that's the change in position. Something is accelerating when its change in position is changing over time, which can be kind of a confusing thing to think about. So we're going to try to keep it simple for now. We'll get into the more difficult stuff about accelerated motion later on. But right now we need to understand that there's three ways to accelerate. Speeding up, slowing down, and changing directions. We're only going to focus on the first two for now, and we'll worry about changing directions a little bit later in the year. So the word acceleration simply means rate of change in velocity over time. We can symbolize it something like this, and acceleration would have units that look like meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. So the question now is, what does accelerated motion look like on a position versus time graph like we saw before? So remember that the velocity can be found by the slope of a position time graph. So if something is speeding up or slowing down, then that means the slope of the position time graph is going to be changing. If the slope of a graph is changing, then that means that the graph is going to be curved. Namely, it will be a parabola. So if we take this example on the left, that shows something where the velocity is instantaneously changing. There's two corners, if you will, on the graph, and that represents points where we instantaneously go from a slow velocity to a medium velocity and then to a high velocity. If something is smoothly accelerating over time, then we kind of get a similar shape, only it's a smooth curve instead of something that has corners on it. And so if we have something that's speeding up or slowing down, the graph is going to be parabolic. So let's look at some more examples. If we have something where the slope is increasing, then that means that the velocity is increasing, which we can say means it's speeding up. So an example might look something like that. This example would be something that's speeding up and moving backwards. So it's going from a small slope to a big negative slope. That means it's speeding up in the backwards direction. Let's look at some that the graph shows something that is slowing down. In this case, the slope has to be decreasing. So that graph would show something that's slowing down moving forward. 
this graph would show something that's slowing down, moving backwards. So if we can identify how the slope of the graph is changing, then we can identify if something is speeding up or slowing down or moving at a constant velocity. So here's what I want you to do right now. I'm going to draw four graphs on here. They look like that. What I want you to do is press the pause button for a second and see if you can analyze what's happening to the object moving for each of these graphs. As in which way is it moving? like forwards or backwards, and then if it's speeding up, slowing down, moving at a constant velocity, or maybe even stopped. So hit pause, take a minute to do that real quick, and then press play and see if you agree with me. Okay, so that first graph is curved, so that means something's speeding up or slowing down, and since it's going from a small slope to a big slope, that means it must be speeding up, and since it's moving in the positive direction, it must be moving forward. The second graph starts out curved, which means it's accelerating. It's going towards a smaller slope, so it's initially moving forward and slowing down. But notice that the graph gets flat after a while. Flat graphs means that they're stopped. The fancy physics way to say stopped is to say that it's at rest. The third graph is relatively easy. It's a straight line, so it's constant velocity. And it's got a negative slope, so it must be moving backwards. And then the third one, it starts out flat, and then at the end it's straight, and in the meantime it's curved. So this thing is initially moving backwards and speeding up, the curvy part. And then in the straight part, that means it's moving at a constant velocity. But it's still moving backwards, because the slope is negative. So these are the kind of things we need to be able to do with a graph of position versus time. Figure out if it is speeding up, slowing down, moving at a constant velocity, or possibly even at rest. That just means it's flat. And then if we're given a graph, or if we generate one from data, um, we need to be able to find the initial position and velocity. That's just finding y-intercept and slope. And then third, we need to be able to write or solve the equation that describes the motion of an object with constant velocity, either from graph or from data or from a situation in a given um, problem type scenario. So those are the three things we need to be able to do by the time we get to class next time. So if any of those things feel like things that you're still confused about, rewind, watch again, and if you're still a little bit confused, write down your question and bring it, to, bring it with you to class next time. I'll see you then. Ta-ta.